Okay, today is called completing the square, and that's where you go from general form to vertex form directly. Some kids had noticed that that's the one thing that we never taught you, is to take general form, which looks like this, and take that, and not just like find the y-intercept, that's easy, not just find the x-intercepts, which is where y is zero, that's where you'd want to get this thing factored and get it equal to zero. Um, factored form, again, that's pretty easy if you know how to factor. 2x and x plus 1 plus 1, that would be the factored form for it. Remember factoring? Okay, so then general form is generally you just take this, multiply it out. What's the other form again? Vertex form. And the, way, the thing that we don't have is a good way to go just from either this or this in the vertex form. Vertex form would look like something like this, but we don't have a good way to get there yet. And that's what I'm about to show you, is how to get vertex form out of anything. All right, so again, this is the general way you say it with A's, B's, and C's, and I think it's okay for you to see that. It makes it look more confusing because there's letters all over the place, but that's saying A, B, and C are just numbers. Okay, and it's today I'm just going to show you when we keep it simple and there's no stretch factor, when there's no number in front beside the one, then how do you do it? How do you get vertex form? And there is a cool way to do it. So I'd like you to find this orangey looking page and factor number one and number two. Let's get that brain warmed up, get these puppies factored. And I'm going to pause for a minute how you get them factored. Okay, so hopefully you had this thing factored and it's an X and an X and a plus six and a plus six. Raise your hand if you had that one right. All right, this one's X and an X and a seven and a seven and a minus and a minus. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Now, do you get that I can put them together then and say X plus six quantity squared? Think about that. There's two x plus sixes times each other. That can be x plus six quantity squared. Do you get that that is vertex form? If I put a plus zero here, do you get I know the vertex? Negative six comma zero. And here I got the vertex. It's seven comma zero. Now you might be thinking, well, is that it? All I got to do is factor them and then put them together? That only works on certain kinds. That only works when they factor out to be exactly the same. Did that happen a lot? Did you notice? Did you even notice it ever happening before? No, it's pretty rare that it works out. In fact, here's when it works out. If you take this one, take half of it and square it, what is half of 12? What is 6 squared? So it's called half and square. Half and square. Just think of it as a one dumb crazy word. Half and square. What's half and square of that? 49. 49. Because half of 14 is negative, or negative 14 is negative, 7 negative 7 squared, 49. Okay. So you might be thinking, okay, so, so you say, Mr. Server, you always just factor it. And it'll work, and then you'll have vertex form? No, because, look, this one doesn't work, because that's half and square of that. Nine, but there's a three there. See what I'm saying? So how do I make it work, then, when it isn't going to work? When it's a good guess. You do something to it, but it's not stretch it. All right, how about this? And it's not just shrink it, no. So... How about this? Would you agree that if I wanted to, I can add a 9 to both sides of this equation? Would you agree with that? Yes, All right. I can do that legally as long as I do it to both sides. All right. Something you probably haven't ever contemplated before is I could, if I wanted to, add a 9 on that side and subtract a 9 on that side. Like, that seems like crazy. Like, why would you want to do that? But do you get if I add 9 and subtract 9, I did it was legal? I can do that. It's kind of like if I had 1 plus 2 equals 3. 
and I want to add a 5 on this side, I have to add a 5 on that side to keep it fair, right? But what if I wanted to add a 5 on this side and subtract a 5 on that side? Is the statement still true? Yeah. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 5 minus 5, right? Okay, so something you've never seen before is we can, if we want to, add something and subtract something at the same time. Now, I'm going to change that plus 3 to a diff to different color. Actually, I'm going to make it, I'm going to go back to this, but now it's movable. I can grab it and move it. Okay, I'm about to complete the square. You ready for this? What this is, is me taking this equation and rearranging it so that this part is that kind that'll factor really nice. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, I have made a perfect square. X plus 3 and x plus 3. And what do I still have to deal with, though? The stuff on the outside. But that part just makes negative 6. So now I've got x plus 3, which can be put together and made into squared. Do you get that those two together made that? And then minus 6. I started with general form. I now have vertex form. And the vertex was at negative 3, comma negative 6. All right, I want to back up in time. Back, 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 back. Look how it started. Started as that. And then I just started talking crazy stuff like Half and square, and okay, so what What did I start with? I added something to both sides. What did I add? Why did I pick nine? Because that's the half and square of this. That's the thing that'll work nice. Okay, so then if I add nine, instead of subtracting nine on the other side, I subtract, sorry, instead of adding nine over here, I didn't. I subtracted nine over here. Then I rearranged it to put the 9 over here, so this will be x squared plus 6x plus 9, and I bet you some of you can already do this. Let's see. Just the half and square part, take a look at this slide, just do the half and square part and tell me what number I'd be looking for for each of those. Take half, square it, take half, square it. We don't think we even need to do this many of them, but it's good for you to try it with a variable because we will do that to you later once you're good at this. It makes you think through it. What the heck is half of B? All right, half of the 10 is square it, 25. Raise your hand if you had 25 there, because you're on the right track then. Okay, dice of destiny, call on different people here. Row five, last person, that's you. What's the next one? Half and square. You got it. All right. How about this one? Row three. Person two. That's ZC. Four is correct. Good. And then how about I just go a little faster here? AD. Do you know what to do with the B? Yes. Yes. Just say that. B divided by two. I'm going to choose to multiply by a half. It's the same thing as dividing by two, though. Right? Times it by a half. And then square it. There you go. So I know that's a little weird. I got a letter in the answer. Well, you're in higher algebra for Pete's sake. So you can handle doing this with variables. You have to have variables in your answer a lot of times. So this, I could simplify to b over 2. That's half of b squared. And some kids like to write it as b squared over 4. Do you get that's the same thing? I actually like this way just as much. Don't think that the other way is better. Okay. All right, moving on to this one. What if it's not nice? What if you can't take half of 7 nice? Well, it still works. You just have to use a decimal or a fraction. And in this case, this is one of the only times I can say this in math. Fractions are easier than decimals. 
If you try to do 3.5 squared, good luck with that. It's going to take you a while. But what if you do 7 halves squared? Because now I can square the top and the bottom really easy. What's the top? What's the bottom? 49 fourths. See what I mean? I'm done. The other kid's still going 3.5 times 3.5, drawing a line, trying to multiply them out, move the decimal over. See what I mean? It's actually pretty easy to do ones that are like that. How about this? X squared plus, uh, let's make it another odd number, 9. X minus, or plus what? Let's do one more odd one. Hint. You don't have to actually square it. You're still going to write squared. So what's half a 9? Did you put 9 over 2? That's what you should put. And then squared. Squared. You don't have to make it 81 over 4. Honestly, for, I know where we're going next, and it's actually easier if you just leave it like this. It's totally okay to do that. Okay, so get to this page. Completing the square. Purpose. Used to convert from general to vertex form. So complete the square for vertex form. That's why we're doing this, is so you can get vertex form. Sometimes kids get all done with this, and then we ask the question, find the vertex. And they're like, I don't know how to find the vertex. Well, you know how to find vertex form. Then you know how to find the vertex, right? This is about finding the vertex. So if I have this example and I didn't say complete the square, what else could I say? Find the vertex, put it in vertex form. All of those things are going to happen with this process of completing the square. So complete the square for vertex form. I like to put it all into one big sentence. We are going to complete the square for vertex form. form. All right, so if I was going to do this one, I will do this first one. I know you already know that it's half of 8 is 4 and 4 squared is 16, but do you know how to do this and show the work right? You go x squared plus 8x, and then you put the plus 20 down. So one of the most common mistakes is people forget that the 20 is there, but look at all the room I left. Do you get why I left a whole bunch of room in there? Because I need to put in my plus 9 and minus 9 thing. Okay, except in this case, I'm not going to, it's not 9. What is the magic number that half and square tells us? Half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16, so I'm going to go plus 16. And then immediately, what? Minus 16. And then this part can factor. And any small child can add those together. And you got your answer. Why don't you write down what you think the answer is? And it'll be vertex form. And then, tell me what the vertex is. You used to look at that and go, I, there's no way I can tell what the vertex is. Now you can. The old way would have been to factor it, try to find the dotted line that runs down the middle, then have to take that number, stick it into the equation, and then you'd eventually could have found the vertex. But it would have been a long, complicated process. This, way quicker. All right, would you please compare with the kid next to you and see if they got the same final equation for this as you did. All right, there were some of you that were pretty quiet. Do I have to, like, make you talk to your neighbor? All right, x plus 4 and x plus 4, quantity squared, if I put them together... I hope you get that that would look like this, x plus 4 quantity squared. See, you can jump right to that. This is one of the rare times when I can say you don't have to show your work for that part. Did I just say you never have to show your work on these problems? No, on this part. You don't have to show it all factored out and then put together. You can just put it right together because they're both x plus 4s. And then this part makes 4. So what was the vertex? Not 4 comma 4, negative 4 comma 4. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, awesome. Now, how does it get more complicated? Because sometimes they are fractions. Like uh, one of the ones we did before. Uh, and I will do another practice of that in a minute. But here's the steps all written out. And basically, 
Oh, interesting. They have you move the constant to the left side. You do not have to do that. The way I just showed you will save you time. See how they move it over here? Like they move it over here for safekeeping. And then they move it back later. So uh, the way I showed you, I think, is a little bit easier than this. But these, these steps would also work if you're more of a visual person and you want to see it all written out. Do you get at the end, they just take that 27 and move it back over to the other side? It's just like they, they do an extra step to move the number over to the left side and then they move it back. I personally like what we did, which is just left it over here. And they didn't move the 20 over to the other side and then back again. That seems like two extra steps we don't have to do. We just leave the 20 over there. And then this 20 and the 16 go together and made that four. Okay, so here's another one. Try that one without any help from me. See if you've learned it well enough. Hint, move the 50 over to make room. Pause while you give this a try. All right, so I'm getting a student to help me understand what to do here. So first, what did you do? You're making a space. X squared minus 14X, and then make some space and put the 50 over here. I like it. Now what? Half and square, half negative 7 squared is plus 49. And can you explain, a lot of people don't, like, why are we subtracting 49? <laughs> yeah, you need to do it both sides. You could put plus 49 over here, but instead, we're just going to subtract 49 over there. Okay, now what? Like it? X plus 7 squared, most common wrong answer. What's wrong about it? Because there's a minus... And the only way this would work is x minus 7 and x minus 7. That's the only way to get a negative in there. Some people think there's 1 plus and 1 minus, but then they wouldn't go together and say squared. So x minus 7 quantity squared. Nice work. Again, finish the deal. All right. This was a minus 49 right here. It's not super clear. That minus 49 goes with this plus 50, and you get plus 1. So why is this done? Why do we do this? It's just juggling it. It no, it finds us something. And what you said is right. The vertex. Seven comma one is the vertex for that original equation. And it's that's called completing the square. And you can do it at anything. You can take any equation to do that to it and find it's a vertex really quick. And it's pretty nice. Alright. This is the same idea except just bigger numbers. Don't stress, they're just a little bit bigger numbers. I'm going to pause for a second and give that a try. This should be like a one-minute boom-boom deal. Okay, here's what you should have done. That 94 needs to move way over to make us some room. All I did is move it over. And then I take half of this and square it. Negative 10 squared is 100. And then I do, if I do plus 100, i got to cancel it. I could either do minus 100 over here, which is a lot slower than just doing minus, or sorry, plus 100 over there, or minus 100 right here. And then this part factors y equals x minus, what makes 100? 10 times 10 makes 100. There we go. And those two together, negative 6. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Cool. So what are you, what are you going to get stumped by? Well, when we change them to fractions, uh, x squared plus 7x plus 1, do this one, and when it goes half and square, kind of goes bad on you, make it a fraction. The same exact start, it's just you're going to have a fraction in it. Don't let that stop you. You should be able to follow the same exact process. So first thing I do is move the 1 over. Next thing I do is half and square. What's half a 7? Well, it's 3.5. Don't put 3.5. It'll make your life way more difficult. Instead, put 7 over 2 squared, which is 49 fourths. But don't do that either. Much more complicated. Much easier to just leave it as 7 half squared. Remember me saying that I'd be fine with that? All right, you with me so far? That was half and squared. Okay. 
then I do minus the same exact thing. Again, trust me on this, it's probably easier to leave it. Now this is the part that's supposed to make a perfect square, and it does really nicely. X plus, what do you think? That's why I kept saying to leave the seven halves in there, because it's just seven halves. If you would have taken all the time to make that into 49 fourths, you'd have to unsquare it now to get this number. And then, plus one at the end, okay, this is a little bit of a pain. But you know what? Honestly, it's, it's like a top 20 type thing. It's not like super hard. It's just got to grind it out. Negative of 7 halves squared. Now you do have to multiply it all the way out. 49 fourths plus 1. And I need a common denominator. Do you get 1 is the same as 4 fourths? 1 over 1. If I times it by 4 on the top and the bottom, it would be 4 fourths. Can you put those together? If you can't, then you're not going to get an A on this next test. You have to be able to tough out adding fractions. So my final answer, x plus 7 halves squared, kick, come on, and then this together, there's a whole lot more negatives than positives, right? So my answer is negative 40 something, but let me think, negative 49 and positive 4, so that makes negative 45 fourths. Those of you that are terrible at fractions are going to hate that last part, but you've got to get good at it. That's one of the reasons I put it in the top 20. Getting common denominators is in there because you've got to be able to handle this. You won't have a calculator to do this for you. If you get, I got to lay seven halves all the way through that big complicated problem. I just called it seven halves the whole time. So half of an odd number isn't that bad. All right. The only part where you have to add fractions is at the very end. Okay, that's it. And now you probably saw it come past here. Here is the worksheet. And I have looked through it and decided that we don't need that much practice. So, and every now and then there's a kid at the end who's like, you know, is there any extra practice problems that I could do to get ready for the test? Me skipping problems now allows you to have more practice problems on the test if you want them. Okay, so I think part B of every part of the worksheet. All the problems. Part B may be skipped. Okay, so that, that does skip a fair amount of problems, and I hope you respect the fact that I'm trying to honor your need for some free time in your life, but yet you know you probably should practice. And one more thing. I'm going to try for a while having you Dropbox every homework assignment, because some of you have been slacking big time, and this is your moment where you can change that. I have, I have looked through the uh, homework quizzes and stuff, and i got to crack down because there's some of you that just aren't doing it. And I get it. You're going, well, my science teacher actually needs this thing tomorrow, and I can probably get away with not doing my math. He'll never know, or he doesn't seem to care. And so i got to start taking it every day. Otherwise, some kids just aren't willing to do it. So do your homework. I cut it down to a reasonable size. You need to do it. So... Uh, the Dropbox will be activated tomorrow. We're going to start Dropboxing everything that you do. And I will also add this. If you become a chronic homework not doer, I am going to contact your parents and make sure that they know that you are making that choice. And I will be respectful about it. I'm not going to say, oh, they're a slacker, they're not doing their work, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to say, I can tell your kid's really busy with a lot of other things because uh, their homework hasn't been coming in. And I know it's for good reasons, but I just want to make sure you know that they have to make that choice, that they got that much going on in their life that they're not getting their homework done. And then it's between you and your parents. If, you're, if they're okay with it, I'm okay with it. I really am. In fact, you could decide not to do any more homework in, the, in this class, and you're still a good person. You're not going to do as well in this class. But now I'll make it your choice. But I'm gonna have I wanna drop box that sucker every day so I can see them. Alright, that's all I got for you for today.